Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, we're gonna be doing something that was heavily requested. We're gonna be taking my first look at Dalia OS. This right here is a very interesting um, Linux-based distribution that features a lot of the components of Google's Fuchsia operating system, which you may know as the uh, current default operating system in these uh, Google hubs right here. And a lot of the native applications in the uh, Dahlia OS is written in Flutter. Now it's kind of cruising around on the website. You could see some of the information. It has just the basics. Supposedly there's a wide range of supported devices. And if you want to right now, you could go ahead and actually try it out. They have a little uh, web friendly format so you can uh, check out some of the elements and whatnot for yourself but we're gonna be diving into this in a virtual machine in just a minute, right after we thank the sponsor of today's video, Linode. Linode is an absolutely wonderful platform to host your Linux web services. I'm currently using Linode to host techhut.tv, a Nextcloud instance, and any other web services that I need. With Linux servers starting as low as $5 a month and a whole slew of easy one-click web installers, Linode is a fantastic option to get all your services, projects, or whatever you need up and running today. And better yet, if you use the link down below, you can get a $100 60 day credit to go ahead and play around with Linode today. Now, the cool thing about this operating system is they do have a lot of different documentation to go ahead and learn exactly what is going on here. Over here under OS Linux, we kind of see the system layout and exactly how it's running here. It says, although Linux and Zircon, which is the kernel for the Fursha operating system, cannot be more different, Delay OS Linux blends security, efficiency, and virtualization compatibilities of the Zircon and lightweight Linux-based system. If we go ahead and open up this guy here, we can kind of see what's going on. Everything's on top of the Grub bootloader and the Linux kernel. And then above that, we have the base user space and the modular user space. The modular user space uses basically a virtualization client called Graft. And then from there, you can virtualize whatever you need, whether that be containers, other virtual machines, or the actual uh, Fuchsia operating system here. And then over here, we have the user agents. It's running on Flutter and Xorg. And then we have a uh, pangolin, which is the user shell or the desktop environment. And then we have a base recovery operating system over here. And I'll go ahead and link to this page down below if you want to learn more about the Fuchsia emulator within this, if you're interested in checking this out specifically. And of course, being that this is Linux, it is modular, so you could go ahead and uh, fire up a virtual machine of something else, such as Arch Linux here, and actually go ahead and install their desktop environment. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and jump into a virtual machine and try out this distribution. All right, so here we are in Dali OS. Now the uh, display wasn't really cooperating, but luckily XRNR, just a simple set command, worked perfectly fine. Now this download was, I think for the legacy version, there's two different versions. You have the EFI version and then the legacy, just standard ISO. Uh, the legacy was under 500 megabytes, and I think the EFI is closer to a uh, gigabyte. So when it comes to the actual download size, it's uh, moderately lightweight. And the reason why I had to set this right here is because the first thing we'll go ahead and check out real quick is the actual settings. So settings is beautiful, and you can see just how snappy everything is, especially considering how good the general UI looks. Under network, we have all the basic settings you'd expect, including some VPN and DNS stuff. We have some connected devices. Again, this is a virtual machine, so I can't really test a lot of this stuff. And a lot of the settings elements are here, but they don't actually uh, do anything. For example, under phone integration, you can see it's just showing a little logo, no actual settings associated with it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and skip customization for now. We'll come back to that. Under display, you can see I have absolutely no settings. Thus why I needed to open up the terminal in the XRNR command. We have some sound stuff, or we don't have some sound stuff. Locale, notifications, applications, all our empty settings panes. And then under system, we have developer options. So I can enable developer mode and debugging features if I would like to. And then we have about this device. You can see we are running Linux 5.17. This is a custom Linux kernel. The architecture is currently unknown. This is their desktop environment. I'm probably gonna say this wrong, P Pangolin? Something. Uh, under software update, updates are currently disabled. This is running as a live disk image. Uh, at least I haven't been able to find a uh, installer, so I don't think that actually installing this 
onto a device is enabled as of yet. We have some legal notices, so two licenses are required for um, the stack walker and then any other components that have licenses that they use are all available here. And just kind of scrolling through these, you can see just the animations they have here are absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna go back real quick and now we're gonna go up to customization. A lot of the stuff that you'd expect, the actual UI, you kind of see what's going on here. It reminds me a lot of like Deepin mixed with Windows 11 with some uh, mobile elements. So right here, we have the option to switch between a light and dark theme, nice little transition there. Uh, we have our accent colors so you can see all the reds, green, blue, really whatever you want. Right here, taskbar alignment. I do like the default here. This is what I currently have my uh, Windows partition set up as with the uh, starts all back icons in the middle. Start menu is still over here on the left. Over here, we have the window border radius. So if I go ahead and pump this up a bit, let's see if it actually changes anything. Which it doesn't look like it is. If I enable the colored title bars, it's enabling that, it's black. Maybe if I change this. So yeah, some things are there, some things are not there. Uh, transparent color title bars. Does it change with this? No, it doesn't. But it's cool that that's actually an option. That's the first time I've seen title bar settings integrated into a uh, settings pane like this. And then of course we have search. So if I wanted to search something such as Wi-Fi, it isn't searching. <laughs> Blue, yeah, so that doesn't work either. A lot of elements don't work, but they have a really good canvas to work off of here. So getting into the general UI before we start opening some more of these applications, kind of saw the start menu for a second there. It's a full screen categorized start menu. So we have all of our applications. We have media, gaming, development office system, and internet. If I search for something, let's see if it actually works. Oh, that's weird. Uh, need to fix that. Web. So that works. The actual search thing right here looks really cool. If I click on this, does anything happen? No, it does not, but the search works at least. And it looks like from down here, we can also get to our uh, search this way. Right next to it, we have our workspaces. So you can open new desktops, go to other desktops. I'm not sure why that's showing up as the background. Let's try to open up a new desktop. Ah, that doesn't work either. So the, this operating system is kind of feeling more like a, a prototype than anything. Uh, if we go down here, this is our uh, system tray and clock. So if I give this an open, this looks really good here. We have our volume control, very nice slider. Uh, we have shortcuts to new events, alpha build, a website. Um, dare I click on one of these? Let's try to open the website. Nope. Can I add a new shortcut? Nope. <laughs> so here, supposedly we could change our theme, which that works. It's just a light and dark switcher. Or I can open up, ooh, that's cool, the settings, and then quickly change my accent colors here if I would like to. Uh, so let's go back. Uh, airplane mode, Bluetooth. So if everything worked properly, I mean, this would be a really cool, like, tablet OS. Here we have settings, login, logout. If I click on root, it doesn't look like we have any other user accounts to choose from other than our root. So, uh, I mean, like I said a second ago, pretty good canvas they're working off here. Uh, web app manager with the... Uh, Actual text not properly centered. So here, uh, web apps, looks like we have Discord, Visual Code Studio, Google, Minecraft Classic. Let's try to just grab Discord. Aw, so none of these work. Again, good idea. <laughs> Open this up, we have our settings, calculator. Ooh, that's a pretty calculator application. Not sure why it's green. You'd think it would match the uh, accent colors. Oh, there's no snapping features. Oh crap, it did install all those. Discord, Google. Okay, so it just wasn't giving me any confirmations. Um, I'll go to those in just a sec. Terminal, um, this is Linux, so if I run like uh, uname, yep, Linux, uh, uname, is it dash R to get the kernel version? Okay, so let's see, do we have NeoFetch? That'd be cool. We do have NeoFetch, WOS, this is VMware right now. The reason I have it in VMware is because uh, it really wasn't wanting to cooperate with me under VirtualBox. Uh, ZSH, cool. Uh, right here, the it looks like we're only using 443 megabytes of RAM, so that is fantastic performance. Let's go ahead and open up our web browser and see if, actually, before we do that, let's open up HTOP. Is HTOP installed? It is installed. Cool. Okay, so let's open up a web browser. Ooh, our memory kind of got screwed up there. So it's jumping up to 600. Let's go to an actual website here. If I go to Tech Hut, 
go to our Tech Hut website, it's still at 600 megabytes of RAM. So when they say it's lightweight, they were not joking around. Oh yeah, techhut.tv, check it out. Let's go to a website that I know doesn't really uh, help with system resources. See if we could get this to go above a gig. Because if it doesn't go above a gig on a YouTube video, that is phenomenal. So let's search up a video that I won't get stricken for. So we are uh, just barely above a gig playing this ad here. So at least in the early stages of this uh, distribution here, when they do, when they say lightweight, they really do mean lightweight. So with that, let's go ahead and open up some more of these applications here. We have a basic text editor, which this is beautiful. I wonder if it supports markdown out of the box. Test, nope. But from a UI standpoint, this is immaculate. Uh, we have print, share, save, and all the different headings and bolds and whatever it is that we may need to edit. So next up we have graft. Now this is already in a virtual machine, so this probably isn't gonna work very well. But this is a, a virtual machine manager written in Flutter, at least the UI front elements are. Um, so is there an actual Macintosh thing on here? Can I click on anything? I can't click on any of these arrows. So can I just start this one? Eh, restart, destroy, new, new. Okay, so that's not working either. From a UI perspective, it is, it's looking really good. Files, their file manager it looks almost identical to a web browser, which I do really like. Going under root, making a new folder, folder name, test, enter. So at, at, we found something on this operating system that works. That's good. Media, there doesn't seem to be much going on. There's a lot of whatever this is. Uh, the media application just seems like a really standard mobile media application, similar to the just basic like gallery go application that we have on a uh, on Google phones here. The clock application is a clock application. It indeed tells us the time and it is the correct time too. So that's cool. System logs, welcome. Ooh, so here we go. Warning, you're using a pre-release build of this operating system. Features may not work as intended. The, this should have popped up when we first booted. That would have been helpful. So here we have our build information and release notes. Ah, social media, feedback, credits, getting started. So here under getting started, tips to getting started. There are no tips to getting started, which I can understand why. <laughs> we have a task manager. So I had HTOP open this whole time. Uh, null, null, okay. Resources, does this work? No, containers, none. So it's a good thing we're running HTOP. Still 600 megabytes of RAM, very lightweight. There's also nothing running in the background, so that's probably why. Uh, let's log into Discord or see if this actually works. All right, so the Discord web app is opening, loading slightly off-centered. All right, so we are now in the Tech Hut uh, Discord server, which I would recommend you check out. Still right about a gig, so with that web browser open, with at least one instance of the web browser open, we're just at about a gigabyte here. I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. Additionally, we have Google Town Scraper Visual Code Studio. I'm not gonna open up a lot of this stuff. We have Minecraft Classic. There's no way I'm gonna to try to open that up. And yeah, that's about it for applications. We have some other settings down here. If I actually go over here, click this, we can switch to a more traditional standard layout of a start menu. And then from here, we can pin certain things, which doesn't look like that works either. So yeah, this it's a, it's a cool little project. It's definitely something that you, literally cannot use as a daily driver. I mean, if you're really dedicated to it, you you probably could get away with it just running those containerized web browser instances. But cool project, cool uh, prototype, I would say, for what it could become. And if you're interested in trying it out, down below will be links so you could go ahead and spin it up in a virtual machine. But with all of that, again, thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Linode. They have a whole bunch of different Linux distributions that you could choose from to install on server instances that actually work. So check out the link down below to get that $100 60 day credit. Thank you YouTube members and Patreon supporters. For those of you who are one of the above, uh, you've probably gotten to watch this video early because I posted a uh, ad free version of this over on those channels. Uh, with all that, have a beautiful day and goodbye.